Get ready for some rapid fire egg puns because this is a very exciting video. We're going to be doing some long egg exposures to create light painted Easter eggs. Enough yoking around, I'm going to go and get started. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adaptslux and welcome back to another macro photography video. First of all, I'm not sorry at all for all of those egg puns in the intro, um, but hopefully you got the gist of what we're doing today. We're going to be creating our own painted Easter eggs, light painted that is, just to create a slightly different image, one that I've not really seen done before, at least on YouTube. We are going to be starting off with a very familiar shot though, one that uh, if you've played around with eggs and macro photography before, I'm sure you'll be familiar with. So I'd be very surprised if you've never seen this shot before with two forks and an egg sat on top. It's a very common shot, especially for those starting off in macro photography and still life. Um, playing around with a shot like this is really interesting because you have that curved matte surface of the egg while you also have the shiny reflective surfaces of the forks and that uh, can interact with light in a really interesting way. So this starting shot is an interesting one all uh, on its own but uh, like I mentioned it's been done to death. Everybody's taken this shot so I want to make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more eastery and a little bit more exciting. Now that we have our basic starting shot set up, it's time to play around with our long exposure settings. Now long exposures are pretty important for light painting because the longer your exposure, the more time you have to play around with your lights and create the effect that you want. If you only need a couple of seconds, uh, you can probably do this in the daytime in a fairly well lit room. However, I want to uh, aim for at least 30 second exposures. That's going to require darkening my environment because a 30 second exposure in a well lit room is going to come out really really bright even on the lowest ISO and the biggest F number possible. So I'm going to uh, block out some windows and try and uh, make my room as dark as possible ready for when I need to take my long exposure shot. To demonstrate how important it is to get low ambient light, uh, I'm here with my video light still turned on. You can see that I'm quite well lit, um, but I'm at ISO 50 and uh, F32. So I've already maxed out the amount of light that I can take out of this shot. Uh, and that's only getting me to six seconds of exposure. And you can see that my shot is still fairly well exposed, especially that table. So I need to remove all the ambient light possible and see how long I can get my exposure up to. Turning out the video lights has got me nicely up to 30 seconds. However, there is still a window behind my egg which is going to need to be blocked up. But once that is blocked, uh, then we're going to have a nice, perfectly dark image to start light painting with. For light painting, you need a small and versatile light source that's easy to place into your shot and move around without lighting up too much. You want to be able to paint in only the parts of the image that you want lit by that particular light source. The light sources that I'm using today are the Adaptilux Studio lighting arms. So I'm going to be uh, bending these lighting arms around to uh, place them exactly where I need them to be in my shot and move them around inside the shot without uh, too much hassle. I'm going to be plugging them into the pod mini. So I have several pod minis, I have several lighting arms, and I'm going to be moving these around in my shot with different colors and effects. Now these are called lighting arms, but the Americans like to call them light wands for some reason. And I'm going to acquiesce in this video and call them light wands as well, because this is a very Harry Potter-esque movement and moment, moving these around inside your shot and creating these magical effects. Well, they're very wandish, aren't they? So officially lighting arms, but light ones if you like. I go to be uh, setting up multiple different pod minis ready with different colors so that I can pick them up and place them into my shot as I go. Now this is not going to be very interesting with the lights on but uh, to demonstrate how you're going to be moving your light sources around uh, we can look in the daytime here. With my egg set up and my, uh, my light sources at the ready, all I need to do is turn off the lights and start my long exposure. At that point, I can start to light paint. Now, light painting is a little bit uh, tricky to get your head around if you're not familiar with how long exposures work. 
Long exposures work by capturing the light over time. So time is a factor when you're moving your light source around. How long you leave your light source in a particular area is going to determine how bright that part of your image is going to be. So if you want a really bright background, you might want to spend some time uh, back here lighting up the background. Same for the foreground, you can move your, your light down here. And for the egg, you might want to move in nice and close so that it gets really bright on the parts of the egg that you want to illuminate. Uh, the different parts of your image are going to be illuminated by your light source, but the light source itself is not going to show in your picture, provided that you're moving. The one time it will show in your picture is if you point your light source towards the camera. Now this is a very, very bright point of light in your image, and it will create streaks through the shot. So you might want to use that for creating some cool effects. Uh, you can move your light source between your egg and your, uh, your camera, being very careful careful not to knock the egg off its perch, and that will create these streaks of light between the camera and the egg that can only really be created using a long exposure. You might want to swap out your colours halfway through and do streaks of two different colours. You might want to leave one colour on your egg and then do the streaks in a different colour. Um, all of this is going to be reflected in the forks as well, so as you move your lights around it's going to create interesting swirls and highlights in the reflective edges of the fork. All of this is going to come together to create an image on the back of your camera. There's really no telling what it's going to look like because all of your movements are going to be different every single time. You can try and recreate the same thing, but I guarantee, especially if you're doing some streaks of light, it's going to look different every time you try it. This is another one of those shoots that requires a lot of trial and error and some patience. However, the patience is not too much of a factor in this particular shoot because, well, it's really fun. Usually you're sat behind your camera during a long exposure, just waiting for it to finish. However, the opposite is true with this shoot. You're trying to get as much done in that 30 seconds as you can, moving your lights around and playing around with things, changing the colors. It all goes by really quickly, and then the result pops up on the back of the camera, and that's the fun bit. You don't know what that's going to look like. Every single one is going to be completely different. So that makes this a fantastic shoot to play around on an Easter weekend or any weekend for that matter, and you're not really sure what you want to photograph, and you just want to experiment with light and colour and the subject that you may or may not be already familiar with. You might want to give your egg a base level of illumination, uh, placing a single light source or perhaps two light sources relatively far away from the egg and relatively low um, in their brightness. You can uh, illuminate your egg so that it still looks um, like an egg in your scene. You're then adding to this light, creating those light streaks while your egg is still gathering the light from this, um, this base light source. And you can decide how bright you want this to be by changing the settings in your camera to compensate for um, this light source being there. Um, you can also change the brightness of this light source to level it out with the light painting that you're doing with your different colors. This is, again, a little bit of trial and error, a little bit of experimentation on how bright do you want your base level of illumination and how bright do you want your effects. To demonstrate the importance of that base level of illumination and the ambient light in your room once again, I've turned my lights off so that we've got a very dark scene. My camera is now set to f32, ISO 100 and uh, 30 second exposure, so we're getting a really dark base level of illumination. However, when I start to bring in an extra light source, that base level of illumination is going to increase. So I can have my light set to still show off my egg, but with that 30 second exposure, still be able to add extra light sources to this scene. Now, it's important to balance your lights quite uh, thoroughly when you're doing this, because any extra light into this scene will expose that extra part of the egg to more light. So uh, the brightness of the egg is going to be um, this base level illumination plus any extra light that you add. Again, it might take a little bit of experimentation, but if you want to still be able to see your egg scene in its true colors while adding extra colors and effects, this is the way to go about it. 
I hope that this little exploration into light painting was enough to give you guys some inspiration so that when the kids are painting their Easter eggs, you can be light painting your Easter eggs. Of course, you can do this any time of the year, but uh, light painting is a fantastic tool to have under your belt when it comes to creative and abstract macro photography. I'd definitely like to know from you guys what you think to today's shoot, and if you give it a go, make sure to share your results with us in the Adapter Looks Facebook group. You can uh, find the link to that down in the description. Come and say hello and share your shots. All that's left for you guys to do is hit the subscribe button so that you're here for more macro photography ideas, inspiration, and tutorials coming in the future. But for now, that is all I've got time for. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.